Hostiles, 12 o'clock and 6 miles. What is this tack they're looking for anyway? It's some kind of weapon left by the ancients. The kind that decides who wins the war. Have Moloch's warriors been here before? I don't like the look of this. That was above and beyond. Isn't the Lambda site off-world, sir? I'd like to briefly take a moment and say thank you to everyone who has continued to join us over the Florida Maquis Patreon channel. The Holy Bible teaches us, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. If you'd like to join us over there, it's only one U.S. dollar per month at the base level, and even less than that if you sign up for an entire year, and no matter what level you choose, it's fully refundable. First 90 days, no questions asked. What's the difference between YouTube and Patreon? At Patreon, we can take the gloves off. There are no sensors. We have, of course, the Patreon firewall, and then we also have Vimeo that we're partnering with, and that gives us one extra layer of protection where we can speak our minds and we can take advantage of rights that we used to enjoy in this country freely. would love to have you over there. There are hundreds of of exclusive videos never before seen here on YouTube. Please, if you have the ability, would love to have you over there. You won't regret it. God bless all of you, and thank you so much. It has taken weeks of painstaking research, but I think I have put all of the pieces together that explain how we got to Antarctica being the continent that we know today, even though maps from the 15s and 1600s show it being a very different place. There's an article out recently that talks about these fossils found in southern Chile that show conclusively, conclusively that at one time the two places, Chile and Antarctica, were connected. And there couldn't possibly have been a 900 kilometer ocean gap in between the two places. Now, their big explanation says that it was hundreds and hundreds of millions of years ago and all this other nonsense. Well, there's an event in the historical record that explains this, this gap, this area between here. It's been referred to as the Drake's Passage, but it's very clear that Drake's Passage goes through the tip of South America. We've shown that before. If there had been a land bridge, or this area had been connected, this whole climate, what they call the Roaring Forties around Antarctica, wouldn't be. And without that, you don't have this giant amount of ice and wind and snow. It changes everything. The currents change everything. I'm sure many of you are familiar with what we call the Hayline Cycle. That brings warm, temperate air as far north as Great Britain. Without it, Great Britain would be just like northern Canada. Ocean currents have a lot to do with everything. So without any further delay, I want to walk you through some maps and show you when this event took place and we can see it in the record. So here we go. Here's our first map. This is... And I've had to write this down, so pardon me if I sound like I'm looking away. This is Batiste Agnese from 1544. 
And if you look down here, and he's showing the map that Magellan took to circumnavigate the globe. Down here, he shows Antarctica and South America vir being virtually right on top of each other. Almost all of these maps show Tierra del Fuego, an area that we know to be part of Antarctica, or pardon me, part of South America, as part of Antarctica. So this is, the years are going to be important here. 1544. Now our next map. This is Diego Gutierrez, 1562, showing the exact same thing. And an important thing that we see here is what we know to be the, the South Sandwich Islands or this ring of islands is not annotated in these early maps, even though they're very detailed as far as the Caribbean goes. They have the Dominican, Haiti, Cuba, Puerto Rico, all pretty close. Now, the next stop, this is the Ortelius map. This is one of the most popular ones. This is 1570. Shows the same thing. No islands and these two continents being like right on top of each other. This is just a larger picture of the Ortelius map. And I just want to show no islands out here. And for those of you that don't know what I'm talking about, it's this gap here that I believe occurred in the last few hundred years. None of these islands out here, this ring of islands, are shown in any of these maps from the 15s and 1600s. But that's about to change. Now, next map. This is Mercator, 1595. Once again, showing the exact same thing. They have the gap with and with Africa, correct? Why wouldn't this be? Still no islands. So we've gone from 1544, 1562, all the way up to 1595. Now here's Hondius, 1620. We've shown this map many times. Same thing, 1620, still very close together. This is a map, I'm not sure how to pronounce this name, B-L-A-E-U-W. I'm not even going to try to pronounce it, but once again, we see the same thing. Same thing, tip of South America, Chile, Patagonia, all part of this. And this is up to 1645 now. So this is 100 years that we've spanned. And one, two, three, four, five different map makers. This is Kirchner, 1668. Same thing. Now, here's where things change. This is a map, 1714, published by Covens and Mortier in Amsterdam. And it's really cool that they have this magnifier here. Antarctica, Antarctica disappears. All of a sudden, the tip of South America is just by itself an empty ocean. And this is 1714. Something changed between 1668 and 1714 in the historical record. This is our target. This is when it changed. Still, we see no evidence of those islands out here. This is what they call the Sandwich Islands. They're not out here. Here's a map from 1865. All of a sudden we see Antarctica again, but now for the first time in the historical record, we see these islands annotated. So our target year, our target years are sometime between 1668 and 1714. Something happened that caused a major upheaval in this region. Now, what could that be? Well, I think I found out what it was. This is the wiki on something called the 1707 Hawaii earthquake. And I want to read this for you because it's very important. Struck South Central Japan at 1400 local time, 28 October, 1707. You ready for this? 
it was the largest earthquake in Japanese history until 2011. Magnitude 8.6 or 8.7 and 49 days later caused the one of the largest eruptions of Mount Fuji. Now here's the smoking gun part. It talks about the tsunami. Along the southwestern coast of Kochi, run-up heights averaged 7.7 .7 meters to 10 meters in places. 25.7 meters high at Kure, Nakatosa, Kochi, and 23 meters at Tanazaki. Guys, that is a huge tsunami. That's 70, 23 meters is over 75 feet tall. That's like the size of an eight-story building. That's like this. Now, that tsunami from that region would have raced across the Pacific from Japan. And looking at this on a map, if there had been a land bridge here, and maybe there had been some small passages in between the Pacific and the Atlantic, that earthquake, that tsunami would have raced across the Pacific and blasted into this land bridge right here and broke it open. And once, and as you've seen, and there's so many videos on YouTube, and it's a fascinating thing to see where somebody has created a dam, like usually with sand at the beach between a river and the ocean, and they just take their foot and they just open up a tiny little trickle of water between the one side and the other. And in a matter of five to ten minutes, it becomes a torrent of water that no human could stand in. Just from a tiny little trickle. Now imagine something like that going on for years and years. This massive flow having broken open a channel that might have just taken advantage of the slight tiny height difference between the Pacific and the Atlantic. This is the event that I believe explains this. And to add one more piece of evidence, and this is a little bit harder to understand, this is something from the Talos Ice Dome in Antarctica. And it shows temperature variations over the years. Now I'm going to zoom in here and show you this chart. Right at about 1700 there is a major spike right here in the temperatures meaning something catastrophic happened in this region the Talos ice dome and I'll show you where that is real quick hold on Talos ice dome is down here so it would have hit down here as well So looking at this picture, this image, this is exactly what we see when we look at this giant area up here where there's this giant push of water that's pushed up those islands. It looks like this side of Antarctica just got smacked by some giant force from sea, some giant wave. And would have broken up the land bridge and the maps show it from the 1500s all the way up until the late 1600s we see there being a land bridge and another part of this evidence so to speak is the fact that these islands out here don't appear on any maps until the mid to late 1700s and 1800s and visually, I, it's looks exactly like what happened. This part of South America trails off to the east. This part of Antarctica trails off in the same direction. Something catastrophic happened. And it wasn't 55 million years ago. 
we have an event. We have an event, we have the maps that show it, and we have the proof in the historical record. It would explain why there are fossils that they're finding of all sorts of animals here that trace their genesis here. There's no way these these little tiny monkeys and tiny vertebrate animals would have been able to cross this 900 kilometer gap if it were this. Sailors and ships have a hard enough time navigating. There's, there's no way some small animal swam this. This was connected. This was all one place at one time. And it would have changed the climate. And it would have allowed for advanced seafaring civilizations. And had it been connected, here's the thing, you wouldn't even have needed, thinking about this logically, let's assume this was all connected, one giant land bridge. You could have stayed right along the coast and traveled from Antarctica all the way up the spine of South America. And also, when we look at this side of South America, don't you see something a little strange about this area here? Why is it all so ravaged compared to the rest of the continent? Some say, you know, Ring of Fire. I personally think a giant tsunami did this and ravaged this whole region. Huge wall of water came through here, and this part of the continent could take it, this part of the continent could take it, but as you get down here, you can see where it started to tear things up. And eventually, at the skinniest point, it went through and it pushed up this series of islands here. And you can look up every one of these islands. And the discovery is 1780, 1790, 1800. Even though these areas were known back in the 1500s. So anyway, down in the first pinned comment, I'll give you links to all of these maps. It took me forever to find them. Um, but this is what I think we're going to be looking at. Some massive event, 1707, Japan changed Antarctica. Like, share, subscribe. would like to briefly take a moment and say thank you to everyone who has continued to join us over the Florida Maquis Patreon channel. The Holy Bible teaches us, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. If you'd like to join us over there, it's only one U.S. dollar per month at the base level, and even less than that if you sign up for an entire year, and no matter what level you choose, it's fully refundable, First 90 days, no questions asked. What's the difference between YouTube and Patreon? At Patreon, we can take the gloves off. There are no sensors. We have, of course, the Patreon firewall, and then we also have Vimeo that we're partnering with, and that gives us one extra layer of protection where we can speak our minds and we can take advantage of rights that we used to enjoy in this country freely. Would love to have you over there. There are hundreds of of exclusive videos never before seen here on YouTube. Please, if you have the ability, would love to have you over there. You won't regret it. God bless all of you and thank you so much. Hot time, 12 o'clock and six miles. What is this tack they're looking for anyway? It's some kind of weapon left by the ancients. The kind that decides who wins the war. 
Have Moloch's warriors been here before? I don't like the look of this. That was above and beyond, Crimson King. Isn't the land a sight off world, sir? Thank you.